Welcome back, Heat Seekers. We are here with your week eight running back tiers. You've been having some trouble. Maybe the chips are down. We got your back. We're going to help you out. We're going to get you ready to roll for week eight. We got some good stuff going, and Kylo Ren has now joined me. That's what's under the mask. What is going on, Craig? Who is our RB1 overall tier this week? These guys are going to be more of the trick or treat section, but hopefully they're all giving you treats. There's not much to say. These are who they are. Everybody knows these are the top guys, and Derrick Henry's leading the league in fantasy points right now. Uh, from the running back position. Any thoughts or comments on this tier of running backs? No. Aaron Jones, certainly you're probably seeing this after the Thursday night game, which is fine. But with the wide receivers out, as far as Adams, Lazard, and MVS now, it is going to be, I think, Aaron Jones, probably Tunyon, and a whole bunch of Randall Cobb. We'll find out uh, what happens with that. But it just boosts Aaron Jones, I think, for that game. And if I had to pick one of these guys that's more iffy, and like I said, it's really hard, if Belichick decides that he wants to try to shut down that running game. You know, it had happened in that Baltimore game before their bye. Maybe he doesn't live up to that, but it's hard to see, barring injury or something else, Taylor, Henry, Jones, even Cook, not having outstanding games and pushing for that RB1. So this is a good week for fantasy owners of running backs on this list so far because they should give you solid production. Do you have any concerns with the top six running backs? So Barkley really does seem like it's up in the air, and I think that they're probably probably going to lean to the better side of caution and have him sit out based on how things were and mm-hmm. just the history he's had with nagging sort of injuries. So he really is up in the air, I think. Looking at the rest of these guys, you could find situations. Chubb, it sounds like, is going to be healthy, and to me, is certainly a play and is going to be pushing for that against Pittsburgh, being a RB1 top eight here we're talking about, I think. Kamara? If you're just talking about pure rushing, yeah, he's going to have some uh, issues, I think, against Tampa Bay. But as we saw last week when they played 20 attempts for 51 yards, but he had 10 receptions on 11 targets for 128 yards and a touchdown. Whether they're through passing or rushing, they count the same for your running backs. Receptions value may differ, but it's still great production, whether you're in full no or half PPR. And right. some of these guys are in little bits of timeshares or maybe a little bit more like Zeke and Henderson. There are other people that get the ball, even Swift, but Swift, same sort of thing. In PPR leagues, he's been tearing it up just purely based on the targets and the catches that he's getting, even if it isn't through the run game. So there's a lot to like here. Yeah, absolutely. So these three are all guys that are interesting. Fournette going into the season, folks really weren't sure. Like I mentioned on the show the other night, this is what we expected out of him last year when he went from Jacksonville to Tampa, and now we're seeing it. Leading the backfield, getting involved in all facets of the running game, passing game. He's involved pretty regularly, and he's one of those that, if he's your RB1, you can trust him weekly now. He's been consistent for a bit now, and you feel good about starting him. Cordero Patterson is on the other side of it. I keep getting him offered to me in the leagues where I'm competing, and I'm just interested But this is a good matchup for him. I still think Mike Davis gets involved. They can support both these running backs the way the offense is built. And then Elijah Mitchell, six-round running back that is just looking good when on the field. How do you feel about these three? Yeah, there's a little bit of concern if you talk about any of them. Last week was a bit of an outlier with how things went with Mike Davis compared to Patterson. And if it's a closer game, do they use Patterson more? With Gage back, is Patterson less in the passing game potentially? Mitchell... Mm -hmm. It's always 49ers running back roulette, I think. A little bit in the back of your mind, like, is someone else going to come in? Is he going to get hurt? It's hard to trust, I think, is what I'm getting at with that. And Fournette, same thing a little bit. How much are they going to throw the ball versus run the ball? Do they decide just to pound him, or is Fournette sort of an afterthought and not getting his yards against a New Orleans team that's doing all right against the run? So... Do I think that they all have a really good shot to be RB once this week? I do, but you can see the narrative of why they're a little bit lower than that much larger, you know, top eight tier that we have. Yeah, you got plenty. You got more than 12 in the top two sections, so it's not a big deal. I think Gainwell's got RB1 potential, especially if Miles is out and going against Detroit. But that's one that I would be excited about playing as my RB2. Him and I think him and, and Herbert Pollard, there's some really nice plays here. Is there a, a couple of guys in here that you like more than the rest? James Conner is, even in PPR leagues, has been outscoring Edmonds, I think it's the past five weeks. So I I think it's interesting that they're both still seen in the same light with generally, if you talk in PPR formats, people still favor Chase Edmonds when it just hasn't worked out that way. Damian Harris, the Chargers are just giving up loads of Mm -hmm. yards and scores even to running backs here. And 
Harris has proven he's going to be able to do that, at least in that facet of the game, rushing the ball for the Patriots. So I really like him. Herbert, I think, has clearly shown himself to be the guy with Montgomery out. Past week, Damian Williams really wasn't a whole big of a threat to his production, and he did it against that Tampa defense that we just haven't seen give up even, I think it was like 90-some yards or something, to a running back this year. It was quite impressive. Now, yeah. they, they didn't throw the ball or have success throwing the ball, but Gainwell, I think, is interesting. Man, I think Boston Scott is going to get used more than some people think. I like Gain. I think he's throughout all of my dynasty leagues the rookie running back that i have the most shares of because i was a big fan of his doing the rookie draft guide going into it position wise it didn't look that great and now with sanders out he does have a great opportunity but it isn't just going to be him there is going to be boston scott potentially jordan howard who i'm not as scared of but he knows the system he's been there before i think it's gonna be much bigger of a timeshare where i'm not completely confident that Gainwell ends up with that so even against detroit dylan could have, be a sneaky play this week just because of the the amount of opportunity that will be there for all of them. Outside of that, though, with Chubb coming back, it's hard to trust what they do with Dearness Johnson. Does Demetric Felton step in as a hunt side of things, or does has Johnson proven after that banger of a game that he really needs more time? I don't know. What do you think about these flex guys? So, again, we talked about this in prior weeks, and I think on the wide receiver tiers, but how when you're looking at these guys in the flex and sleeper, what is the game script that you're imagining is going to happen? If you think that the Chargers are going to start putting up points after their bye week, they figured it out after that you know big dud against the Ravens, and Patriots are going to have to try to keep up here. Is Brandon Bolden a guy that's going to be catching passes? Two weeks ago, he really didn't against Dallas. Last week, he showed up again. So how do you think he's going to get used? Do you feel that Nick Chubb is going to be healthy? Depending on their quarterback situation, are they going to lean on that run game more? Because they do like to use two running backs. It looks like Dearness Johnson's going to be the guy there with these other guys. Jamal Williams hasn't been getting as much play lately. And as we've had discussions in our chat and Discord, which go check it out if you haven't gone there yet. Mm -hmm. Mike Davis has been a solid flex play, except for last week. So if you look at it, okay, one game versus the rest of the season, can you trust him as a flex? Seems like a lot of people are leaning towards yes depending on who else you have for an option in your flex spot. And Melvin Gordon, he is a, a tier below Javonta Williams. They are still pretty much getting a split as far as playing time and touches. I don't know that there's that much of a chasm of difference, really. You're talking week to week, as you're seeing on the screen here. I think they're probably closer in reality. And Zach Moss, I think, I'm not a big fan of his, but I do think he's a good play against Miami, who gives up a lot of yards to running backs, too, as he seems to be the main running back. He does. It's a good matchup for him this week. All right, so let's round it out. I don't really know that any of these sleepers are super exciting sleepers. I don't know that any one of these guys could produce in such a way that that you're excited about putting him as even. Like, he couldn't move up into a flex-type category because just the way their teams have been using them lately. We know that Naheem Hines will have a couple of banger games throughout the year, but it's hard to trust when that is. I thought, like, last week, I flexed Sony in in a couple spots where I was hurting at running back, and he did nothing, even though I yeah. really thought that he could get you something against Detroit. Nothing, you know? I mean, what do you think about the sleeper category? Is there anyone here that you feel comfortable going, okay, I'm pretty sure I know that this guy will at least produce something for me. David Johnson's going to get touches anyway with Mark Ingram. Yes, he's uh, listed on here wrong. Ingram is on the Saints now. But David Johnson's going to get touches. He had been doing more than Philip Lindsay, who's not on here. So Johnson, I certainly think will. I think Salvin Ahmed probably will too just for the fact that the Miles Gaskin by and large this season hasn't been anything amazing. Malcolm Brown is on IR, so it's those two guys. I don't think Duke Johnson, who might still be on the practice squad, is going to be doing much of anything for him this week. Ingram, potentially, if they end up needing to run the ball a lot. Now, they are going against uh, Tampa Bay, I believe. I don't think that you're going to see a lot of running the ball successfully against Tampa, so Ingram, probably not. He knows the system. He's been there before. He's going to get touches, albeit he is second banana to Alvin Kamara. And a lot of these other guys, it really is hit or miss. Damien Williams will get touches too, but he's the second banana to Herbert, it's pretty clear. But you have a lot of second bananas with limited touches, not necessarily good game situations. You know, Sony Michel, to your point, he's in another good one this week. But is he really going to get those touches or is it going to be the Henderson show? Go off of last week, it's probably just Henderson. So Yeah, it's, it's tough to trust any of these guys in the sleeper category. So Hopefully you guys don't have to use them, but in case of emergency, anything's possible. All right, so here it is. We got our tiers for the week. We're always here to help. We do our best to answer your questions Sunday morning, the Boomer Bus Show. You can get your questions answered live on the show and talk to Bryce and, and Sully and Rick and the team and get your questions answered then. Otherwise, thank you guys. We'll talk to you later.